I thank you, Dr. Anand sir, for inviting me to present my lecture over robotic TKR on Kori. I am Dr. Samir Deshmukh. I am practicing at Akola and from the past uh, 10 years. So to start with uh, knowing the how the robot, how the Kori robot works, it is very important that uh, before you learn robotics, you should know about the different alignments, philosophies of alignments, the CPAC classification, and one guy, his videos are st available over YouTube, that is Stephen Hovels. Don't miss it. So, to start with, this is a 72-year-old male patient with pain and difficulty in walking. X-ray shows tricompartmental OA. is a known case of diabetes mellitus and hypertension and ISD. And pain was more on the left side than the right. So, I decided to do left side first. It's always a clinical examination. I always do before I do uh, start the case to know about how the MCLs and LCLs are there so that I can plan my releases before I start doing the stress test over Cori. This is how we arrange the Cori robot to the leg. They have a laser guide and it can be done by anyone easily. The most important is about calibrating the robotic drill. It's very easy. It con considers very small parts, take not more than one or two minutes, doesn't require any special person, any company person. Easily, uh, we can do it. So that is how we put the burr inside, <coughs> we lock it. We uh, put the probe and it's done in fraction of minutes like doesn't require any skillful person it's very easy the system guides you for everything so now the burr or the robotic drill is being calibrated it is a imageless system now we start with the surgery incision middle parapetalar incisions we remove all the acl pcl i am a ps guy we remove the meniscus and we prepare the entire knee. A standard medial release is done. I never cross the medial coronal plane of the tibia and that is fair enough when you are doing a uh, robotics. We remove all the osteophytes. But when I am doing a robotic cori, I always keep the osteophyte beneath the MCL as it is. Because when I do a posterior cut, the osteophyte automatically comes out. So while planning, I always keep the flexion gap on the medial side slightly tight. Then I do the insertion of the tibia and the femoral pin and then mounting of the arrays are done. Once it is done, the blue diamond shows the femoral marker, the white side, uh, right triangular shows the tibial marker. And both are placed into a one enclosed white box. I do flexion extension, slightly movement of the limb. See that both the markers are inside that boxes. Then I start the femoral checkpoint, the tibial che checkpoint, the medial malleolus, the lateral malleolus. Then the center of tibia, center of femur. And then with this manure, I collect the center of hip. So now all these points of that patient have been given to the system. And the system automatically draws all his axis, mechanical and anatomical, where is the center of the knee, center of the hip, center of the ankle and everything. Now I start the femoral mapping. It is very easy, only I have to move on the probe over the femur and the tibia and it collects all its points. Then I collect the posterior condylar axis which I always keep as 0 degrees. 
then i do the tbl mapping so now after doing the femoral and the tbl mapping the system knows what is the size of the femur tibia how is the femur how is the tibia and everything now this is the first very important screen this screen shows everything the component is in zero degrees means the component is placed along the mechanical axis of the femur and the tibia so that is the default screen first after that we have to collect the mcl and lcl stress at various degrees of flexion and extension but here i make slight changes if my starting point is a mechanical alignment and then i do the stress test my mcl is always tight so while bringing mechanical alignment to a functional alignment no matters how much i rotate varus vulgus whatever i do i'll always find my mcl always tight so i'll always land with mcl releases in a varus knees so what i do i do i change something in this implant planning screen in varus knees from lateral side i take the resection as 9 mm on the medial side i take the resection as 7 mm in other words i am resurfacing the femoral condyle means i am keeping the knee component in a kinematic alignment mode and same i do with the tibia so this is what i am keeping the processes in a kinematic alignment mode then now this kinematic alignment becomes a starting point i take the stress test and see my mcls and lcs they behave differently from this point to balance the knee to maintain a joint line obliquity to maintain the constitutional varus of that patient so this is what is if my starting point is a mechanical alignment and i am doing a functional alignment i am often landing with releases of the mcl spike crustings and all but if i choose kinematic alignment or other alignment adjusted mechanics and i am bringing it to functional alignments i may not release the mcl or i may not release with that extensive so here i now do the mcl and lcl all balancing i always keep flexion gap slightly tight because i have kept that medial osteophyte beneath that mcl so the basic principle we know just 2 minutes 3 minutes the basic principle you know if i increase tibia it will increase flexion and extension if i change uh, distal side of the femur in the extension downsizing oversizing will change the flexion gaps in this system of cori there is a pivot so if i keep it on a medial side pivot the and i rotate i do a varus valgus the medial side will not change it will the lateral side only it will change but if i keep the pivot on the central the medial and lateral side will change in proportion that is 1 is to 2 i can execute the case in three different types i can take only distal burr cut i can take all burr or i can do a visualization cut method i usually follow this visualization cut method because it is faster So I, i can use my saw and i just use my burr to refine my cut that saves my burr and from the last 50 kg i am using the same burr cori is a semi haptic protective system if you see the burr it retracts uh, goes automatically it will not cut more than what you have planned it it's a semi haptic very safe very easy very fast to do and if you are an arthroscopy surgeon damn good it's very good yes, then i after taking a distal cut you can take a peg holes with the cori and you can put your epcc zig take the cut with the saws and here i see as i remove the uh, do a posterior cut the medial osteophyte comes out the mcl become lax my flexion gap is balanced <coughs> the same technique i use for the tibial side the visualization cut saves time then the trials are inserted and the rom is checked and this is how the graph should be dam on the midline give a wash 
cementing and implantation, remove the arrays and it's all done. The system you can close. With the same method I did this case, it's a severe valgus, uh, varus knees, 95 year old, known case of diabetes, I did a cori and this person after doing functional alignment, not much releases on the MCL after 28 days. Similar case, gross varus deformity, did a robotic cori, same method, starting point kin kinematic alignment converted to functional alignment and after 17 days, same patient. In both the cases, I never used a extension rod, no constant polling, nothing. Dr. Samir, can you conclude? Yes, yes sir. just last. This is the other case, post-HTO, gross laxity, took help, the robot helped me to take less 7 mm of cuts and still maintain the joint line. So robot means planning and assessment over the monitor and then execution on the patient. Conventional TKR means first you take the cuts, execution, then you assess what you have done and then plan how to get out. So some of the silent features of the Cori, easy for transportation. This is my two, one is the portable and one is the original stand. I can take it anywhere. No specialist is required. I myself sometimes put all, assemble everything. Easy to start. It's just starting a laptop or a TV. Cori is backed up with a 1 KB of UPS. So for doing bilateral is very easy. Easy to take from one position to another. Doesn't require any load. Thank you. Sir.